New South Wales AMES Online presents Worldwide English. This video is an introduction for teachers looking at what's involved in this exciting course, how it's organised and what the thinking, the methodology, is behind it. We'll go through one unit in detail to see how that methodology is applied and then we'll have a look at some blended learning options for combining the online, individual and group or class options for using the course. So how is Worldwide English organised? There are six levels from beginner, level one, to intermediate, level six. And each level has 15 units. A unit typically involves just over four hours of interactive content. That's around 60 hours in total for each level, depending on how you and your learners are using it. Besides the main online content, other components include workbooks, and these can be accessed here, sample teacher guides, and there's one for each level of those, and there's a mobile app. Check out the video on the homepage. There are also two testing components for Worldwide English. At the start, there are the language level guides, level tests for Worldwide English. The language level guides can be done before starting the course to stream learners to the best starting point for each individual. There are also progress tests at the end of every two levels. These are called the end of level tests and they come up at the end of level two, the end of level four and the end of level six. Let's take a look at the methodology behind the course design. Good, thanks. Each unit in Worldwide English follows a task-based approach. I'm Marty. I live up the road. Focusing on a real communicative task. Put simply, learners read, see and or hear an example of a task in action early on in the unit. Okay, I know this place. You've come For example, chatting in social situations, giving and asking directions, writing personal emails. I'll tell you a couple of things that will make it easier for you when you visit. Talking about customs and traditions. They then spend the remainder of the unit studying the language from the task and the way the task is done and they build gradually through specific practice activities towards their own version of the same task the organisation of sections in each unit can be summarised like this. There's an introduction section with some kind of activity to generate interest and that leads into a model task, model text, which is in video or audio or written text form. That's followed by language study, drawing on the language from that model task and text. And then there's a build-up phase where learners practice aspects and techniques for the task itself. And finally, they come to the last section where they produce their own version of the task. The course design complements the guided discovery approach. A pool dynamic drives learning by allowing instructional content to be accessed gradually and proactively by learners rather than pushing large quantities of information in a way which can be overwhelming. So let's go through a unit and see that organisational model at work. Here's a unit where the task is all about giving simple oral descriptions of people. So we start with the introduction section called Getting Started and we just ease in by matching some snippets of descriptions with some pictures. This is just a taster, remember, an introduction. We're not trying to get too deep into teaching language and functional phrases yet. That will come later. Then we see an example or examples of the main task, and that will produce sample texts. The context here is giving a description so a friend can be picked up from the airport. Describe it for you. Sure. Well then let me see, she's got blonde hair and blue eyes. 
She's fairly tall, just slightly shorter than me. And that video of the task, which has a transcript, is also exploited for receptive skills. Here, listening, but elsewhere, reading. Then, still in the getting started section, we get a tabulated version of the text, highlighting all the structural, language, and other features we're about to study. So, that's a map for what lies ahead. Now we move to the language block, the language focus, and we're starting to pull out examples of tenses, vocabulary sets, functional phrases, and other features that are embedded in the text. In this unit, we obviously have lots of language around descriptions, adjectives, nouns, phrases. Most units have a minimum of two language points, and each point or language area comes in two or three stages, two or three screens. First, there's an activity to explore the area and think about how it works. Then there's some practice, and then, where appropriate, some pronunciation. And as you see here, there's a great range of dynamic variety in the activity types deployed to promote this process of exploration and guided discovery. At this point, we focus back on the main task. We move into what's called the task preparation stage. Remember the description we saw earlier? Well, now we begin to work on the skills and knowledge needed for the learner to produce their own version. Remembering that the example we saw earlier in the unit was all about giving an effective short oral description, we tease apart the techniques, the useful phrases, and the discourse sequencing, the order that things get done, in order to get to the heart of the task. We now isolate these features, skills and techniques for learners to work on individually. The pattern is similar to the one we saw with the language section. Each point, feature or area is first explored and experimented with and then practiced in a controlled way using the same content. Finally, we get to the last of the main sections. Your turn. Now the learner builds a personalised version of the main task. They are scaffolded and supported as they begin to put everything together on their own version. The scaffolding comes with prompts, cues, stem sentences and example recordings. So you see here, the learner drafts their own version from the prompts, uses the samples to compare with their own version, and then they can practice the full speaking task. This stage can be done as pair or group work and it can be recorded. We'll look at some options for that in the next section but for now we leave this section with the unit having come the full circle as the learners get to the point where they are producing their own version of the task they saw at the start of the unit. And finally, just a mention of the very end section, Test Yourself. This has a close based on the text for the task from the beginning of the unit. Learners can work through it autonomously or as a pair activity or in class. And it has a self-correcting answer function. As with any online course, there are obviously different teaching and organisational models for Worldwide English. And how you use Worldwide English will depend on your teaching situation, timetabling, lesson planning and so forth. But we just want to look briefly here at one or two blended learning options that involve learners working as a whole class, working in groups or in pairs, and working autonomously, self-access, at home or at the college. So to get to this idea of blended learning, we can think about how we plan a mini cycle of lessons. And that cycle can run over three stages. The first stage involves setting things up, presenting, introducing. The second stage involves the self-access, and that can be alone, pairs or groups. And the third stage 
is the review and the follow-up. Now what that means is that most lessons will have some follow-up from the last sequence and then later some set up for the next sequence. It's also useful to think about the interaction for each stage. Does the interaction involve the whole class? Is it teacher-led? Is it for pairs, groups, individuals? And is it in the classroom? Thinking about this gives us this kind of sandwich which can be used over a series of lessons or even sometimes in a single lesson. So as we're saying, you have setup phases, you have self-access phases, and you have review phases. So here's an example in action. And this is unit 423, a unit where the task is all about doing a job interview. So as a whole class, and also in person groups, the class has worked through the video content at the start of the unit. Remember, that's our model task and text. Then they work on some language. And they practice some interview techniques. So now we've seen two types of interaction there, whole class and pairs groups. And now comes the middle part, the meat in the sandwich. Learners can work on their own interview responses via the Your Turn page, and they can do that as autonomous self-access study. They might do it in class, they might do it in a workshop setting, or they might do it at home. The important thing is that they take control of that phase. Then later, they'll come back together at the start of the next sandwich cycle and review the work or the outcomes from that middle autonomous stage. And the other type of blending to think about as a teacher is down at the lesson level. Teachers can think about adding to the materials, changing the materials, and doing anything that suits their group of learners. And we ask questions like, what are the elements of our normal teaching that we can use with Worldwide English? Which classroom materials and techniques can support the digital online content? Check out this address to see some ideas and suggestions for combining classroom technique with digital content. And you can also visit this YouTube site to find out more about blended learning, if you haven't been there already.